And the discussion begins. First of all, I want to talk about the, what was making news yesterday, which was the uh, BC Rail ruling. And your comments about being a big girl and having to sort of take it, is it difficult to deal with that sort of thing? Um, I think at first it is when you start this job, but for me, I've kind of gotten used to it. I mean, I just, people say all these things and you just live with it. And I, I you can't really complain about it, I don't think, because it's part of the job. So there's a... And there's an element of it that builds resilience. I actually, I've come to really uh, believe this. And I, in my son, it's my son's 11, and it's kind of hard for him to see all of the stuff, you know, the nasty things that people say. But I say to him, you know what, Hamish, all your life, you're going to find people saying things about you that are not true, and you have to just learn to live with it and plow through and stick with what you believe in and not believe the things that people say about you. So, it, in some respects, it's been a good lesson for him. I think. Are, do, do we as a uh, population need to digest that sort of negativity? Are we getting used to it? I mean, the negative attack ads that, that are part of politics seem to be getting quite a backlash now. Our viewers have chimed in and said it's really bothering them that this seems to be the way campaigning has sort of evolved in our province. What are your thoughts on that? I think politics has always been unique and that you know that's always been a part of campaigns. I mean, I don't know if anybody looks back at Abraham Lincoln's campaigns, but there was a lot, you know, I mean, so it is it's part of and I think in general we live in a less civil society. I mean, and my example of that is reality TV. I mean, we watch reality TV and what do they do? They're mean to each other. And we kind of like watching people be mean to each other on TV. So I, th I generally think that, and when I was on radio, I used to talk about this a lot. What do we do to make our society more civil? Because it's not just politics. It's driving along in a car out there, people honking and yelling and, you know, you're at the supermarket and you're not moving fast enough. And that lady, you know, that older lady in front of you is having trouble sorting out her bill. Well, you know, I think we all have an obligation to be a little bit more civil, not just in politics. And how do we change that? How do we, you know, voters need to vote and voter apathy is a big issue right now. What, do you, what are your thoughts on the, the level of voter, voter turnout? I think, I think that people, voter turnout is affected by a lot of things. I think that it's partly affected by the fact that people don't always have a sense of what's at stake. So I do think, Jody, that in this election we're going to have a high voter turnout because there is so much at stake. So you think about the choices. I'm talking about creating a prosperity fund for our kids that will pay off the provincial debt in 15 years. I'm talking about hugely expanding our trade with Asia and a new a new industry in, in, natural, in exporting natural gas. I'm talking about shrinking government and lower taxes. That's the choices that I'm talking about. And the NDP released their plan and they've said they want higher taxes, they want more carbon taxes, more business taxes, taxes on credit unions, and they want to spend more money as government. So those are the choices that people will have. And I think that because the choices are so stark in this election, because sometimes you can go through election and everybody sounds like they're saying the same thing. This campaign, we are not saying the same thing. And I think that that's going to raise voter turnout. One of the big uh, topics that has come up a lot for us when we discuss with our viewers on social media what is a hot button issue for you, it does come back to that Hollywood North, that Save BC film mentality and there was a, a lot of backlash to the TOIFA awards being brought here, the amount of money spent on that versus investing here in BC Film. How do you respond to that viewer, to that voter? I would say it's a it's always a really difficult decision around when you have to say no to more spending. It's really hard, particularly for an industry like film, which is so important to us. We're and we're so proud of it to bring people from around the world. If they don't physically come here, they can see it on film and all the great jobs that it supports. We spent this year $330 million of citizens' money supporting the film industry. And, you know, we had to make a decision that we just couldn't afford to do any more this year on that. Just because, you know, it's, it was a choice for us, because that all money that comes from somewhere. So in order to do that, we would have had to increase taxes. And I just, you know, I just wasn't prepared to increase taxes this year. Um, so on the other hand, with the $330 million that went to BC Film, we spent $11 million on the whole trade initiative with India, which included the film awards. So it's, it's a much, much smaller amount. And in that deal, we included bringing one guaranteeing one Indian production, at least one, that will come here and use BC talent.
So, you know, it's a much, much smaller amount. It is a way of helping the film industry as well. But um, again, you know, it's, it's, a, it's this thing, you gotta make tough choices when you're in government if you wanna balance your budget and pay off your debt. And that was the choice that we had to make. It's difficult to say no. To, well, to certain areas of the community, is that what I'm hearing? It is, it is, and you know, it's not like it's not a worthy cause. Film is so important to us, and the people who work in film really matter, and they make a big contribution. But getting to a balanced budget, only two provinces got to a balanced budget in the whole country. That was us and Saskatchewan, and you don't get there without saying no to a lot of very, very good causes, things that in good times, when the economy's not so fragile, you'd have no problem supporting. Okay, I got a little bit of a toughie for you because it's about saying no and it seems that every other party is ready to say no to union and corporate donations to campaigns except for the Liberal Party. Why is that? Because at the moment there is no cap on third party spending. So what will happen is you'll cap, I mean it's kind of a, what they're doing is they're playing a shell game with it. They're saying sure we'll cap it on political parties and then all the money will go somewhere else just like it does in the United States. So you look at the massive amounts of money that go to groups like the NRA and all those PACs, they do it because they want to escape, escape scrutiny. We need scrutiny on every single penny that gets spent in every single election campaign. That's what I believe and I think you know if you're if you're just saying it for political parties it's not meaningful. If you're saying you want it across the board then you're talking about something that really matters. Then you're really making sure that there's transparency and scrutiny. And I'm more than prepared to have that discussion. Okay, let's be prepared about your platform. When are we going to get the full platform on what the Liberals are bringing to this election? Now, Jody, I would love to give you the absolute scoop on that, but I haven't given an exact date to anybody yet. All right. So can I say soon, very, very soon? But remember, though, this. We've set out our throne speech where we talked about creating the prosperity fund and paying off the debt. And then we set out our budget so everybody for the next three years so everybody knows where we're going to be spending money and where we're going to be cutting taxes and all that um, so you know our platform is going to be a continuation of that it's not going to be it's not going to be something brand new I mean the reason the platform is so important for the NDP is they haven't said a word about where they want to what they want to do so you know until the last day or two we didn't know that they wanted to raise the carbon tax we didn't know that they wanted to um, raise corporate taxes we didn't know about that until just just recently so their platform will be new information mine will be a continuation of I think I hope information that already people already have because I think I believe in no surprises you know if people are gonna when people go out and vote whoever they vote for they should know what the people they are voting for stand for that's why I'm so anxious to do a one-on-one -on -one debate with Adrian Dix you know, Global TV has invited us to do um, a one-on-one -on -one debate. Omni has invited us to do a one-on-one -on -one debate. Fairchild has invited us to do a one-on-one -on -one debate. We invite you to do and a one-on-one -on -one debate. I, I would be delighted to come and do one with you, Jody. That would be great. We are in contact with Adrian Dick's office, and we will let him know that we open the door for that discussion. We also want him to come in and have this discussion as well so that he can put forth his thoughts, because so much of this is playing out in, in the public forum in little sound bites and that is, it's difficult for voters to, to yeah. consume that. And just simply what you were talking about, a balanced budget, the NDP comes forward and says, but they're using numbers that don't, they don't add up because you're counting assets that you haven't. Yeah. Um, well, I, and you know, on the balanced budget, it's funny because there have been, we had the, the former chief economist of the Bank of Montreal come in and say, the budget is balanced, He's third, absolute third party, won't get a job out of this. Um, our revenue projections are right, um, and the asset sales that we've booked is right. So you can believe the chief economist of the Bank of Montreal who has no job to get out of this, or you can believe Adrian Dix, right? So, I mean, I think it's kind of a, it is important that people see the whole context, and that's what a debate allows us to do. And, you know, people might not agree with me. They might look at it and go, I don't want to vote for her, based on, but they should know. And it's, I liken it to a dinner table, you know? We're going to do two debates with all the parties there. But think about it, you're sitting with your family at dinner, four people, at least in my house, it was six people, we're all shouting at each other. Hard to keep track of where Talking you're at. Talking over each other, cut it off, cut it off. That's right, that's Don't right, finish that's your thought. Here's what I had to say. Wait, 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 my point was. And as the youngest of four, I was always the one that was going, no, wait a minute. So you think about that, it's confusing it sometimes and it's really difficult to figure out where everybody's at. When you're one-on-one, -on -one, and there's only two of us that can get to be premier, you really get a chance to see where the individuals stand. And so I've agreed to do some with the other leaders, but I really think 
that we should do some one-on-one. -on -one. So if that's with you, Jody, I hope that's what happens. I hope it works for that way too. Um, Give me a date and I'll be here. Make some good TV. We will. You say the only as long two as it's not hockey, because I have to be at hockey in the mornings Fair at 5:30. I'm busy here at 5:30, so I'll make sure it's just after hockey. You were talking about uh, only two of you can become premier. Is that true? Given the polls. Pretty the way much, they are yeah. right now? Well, you know, I mean, realistically, I think, you know, the Green Party isn't running a full slate of candidates across the province. So, you know, what they've said is they're going to endorse candidates and run some candidates. So they're not really running enough candidates in any case. And I think they've sort of, what their view is, they want to they wanna get enough votes to be able to elect a few people and they're really focusing their resources. So, um, you know, it's hard to form government when you're not running a candidate in every writing. Same for the other parties. So um, not to say that they don't have a valid point of view. I think people should know where the Green Party stands. And Jane Sturck is a good leader. Like she has been really clear about where she stands on the issues. She's um, she's not someone you have to chase around to find find things out from. She'll just tell you tell you where she is. So um, I think. I think realistically, yeah, there are two parties that are running candidates in every riding, and we're running competitively in every riding. Um, so it's it's Mr. Dix or myself that's applying for this particular job. All right, let's have some fun. Two questions. I know you got to wrap up. Ben's starting to tap his fingers over there. Um, what's one thing people don't know about Christy Clark? Oh, just one. One thing. Um, uh, I really like Haggis. Really? <laughs> I got in so much trouble for not liking it. I, and I, so I'll try it again. But I have a caveat. You really? have to have a glass of single malt scotch with it because you cannot eat the haggis alone. Like you've got to kind of kill the buzz at the end. So it's um, it's a it's you know the, it's a companion thing. Um, but I really like haggis. I know it's not everybody's. It's like tripe. You right. know, the Italian. I, I have Italian friends. They love tripe. Mm -hmm. Well. You know, but I'm of Scottish descent. My people really like the uh, really like, the, like haggis. the haggis. Yeah, yeah. it's like uni at the sushi restaurant. You either love it or you don't. I do not. La there you go. Last question for you. What's on your iPod? Everything. So right now, what's on? Right what's, what's going on? What did I? So what I just did actually, mm -hmm. um, night before last, my son and I sat down and downloaded music together because. I like I run. I'm, I like to go for a run uh, pretty regularly, so I want to stay hip to the new hot music. Yes. So what did he download for me? I now have a lot of Maroon 5, which I like, which is great. Yeah. yeah, and um, a lot of One Direction. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. All right. One yeah. Direction. And my son's now old enough that I don't think I have to take him to the One Direction concert. I think I can. Oh, well, good, because you, know. you can't get a ticket. <laughs> I sold out a year ago. Trust me. They I know. won't even be popular by the. T can I say that without getting hate mail? They won't even be popular by the time the concert comes along. For heaven's sakes, be some new boy band out there. 